Look, let's move on because the opposition is accusing the government of fast-tracking hundreds of visas for Gaza residents, fleeing conflict, with some of these visas being approved in just one hour. Now, Shari Markson last night raised concerns about the government granting a visa to one Palestinian who allegedly liked horrific posts celebrating the October 7 massacre. Tanya, if it's taking the government one hour to do quite stringent mm. security checks. Does it give you much faith that the right people are being approved? Uh, it's really disturbing to think how quick um, some of these applications have been processed. And we're talking about more than 2,500 have been processed um, since October. Uh, this is, um, you know, we should be erring on the side of caution here in Australia. Um, we really should be. And um, the idea um, that we think it's OK to fast-track these type of approvals when we've got no idea um, ultimately, whether we can rely on the paperwork that's being presented. Mm. Um, we don't know the allegiances that some of these people have. Um, it is incredibly sensitive. And I think about countries like Italy or Britain or, or Poland. Are people coming in, in in the same numbers? Are they being given the same uh, fast-tracking approvals? Mm. No, they're not, mm. OK? It's quite mm. clear that this government is fast-tracking these approvals. Um, and, and, and they're doing it at a complete detriment um, to Australia. I, mm. I think I think Shari's right to raise concerns and I think yeah. people should raise concerns. Yeah. Do, do you agree, Craig? Is it at the detriment of Australia? Uh, I think it's, uh, that the framing of it is all wrong. And I think, you know, I think it was James Patterson. Is it James yeah, Patterson? Yeah, yeah, Senator James you know, Patterson, yeah. yeah. I think the, the way James spoke about it in the last couple of days is really quite dangerous, actually. Because what? That? Because I'm, you know, I sit on the Multicultural Council and therefore I'm close to both the Jewish Australian community and the Palestinian community yeah, and... Of course. Yeah, the Muslim and the Arabic and all of them, and, and I want to see all of them uh, treated appropriately. And when we frame it in this way, what we do is we're basically telling Australia, you know, that all Palestinians, you know, are, are you know, are kind of, um, you know, have a sense of criminality, and, I, and and that's clearly not right. There no, are tens that's, of that's thousands not right, of them. Craig. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what we're saying is that you actually have to have stringent processes in place. I get that's that. what we're actually saying. I get that that. Instead of fast tracking these that. approvals, that you're actually doing the thorough checks. I get that. So that let me, Australians let me talk deserve about that. and respect of their governments. I, I, I agree with you. Mm. Of course, holding government accountable to the processes that are there are really important. But every refugee goes through a process. Now, the reason I know this because I was involved with Minister Hawke and uh, uh, Maurice Payne, the foreign minister, on getting emergency visas for Afghan women to get them out on the these exact visas, um, mm -hmm. almost 100 visas. So I was on the phone to Alex Hawke in the middle of the night and Alex and Maurice did a fabulous job in, in the Morrison government mm -hmm. during that really critical period, mm -hmm. as all of the, the, even their political opponents agreed, um, getting these visas. So I know that there are appropriate things in place. Secondly, let me just point out that um, all of them have family members or relatives in Australia, firstly. Secondly, mm -hmm. in order to be eligible, they have to be passed off security checks by three parties, I found out today. Right. Uh, Israel, Egypt and Australia. Right. And so to say that there are no appropriate checks here, with James certainly knows, because, you know, he's a very but smart... For one hour? One hour? That well, seems pretty quick. Uh, that, that, so the question should be raised, but what I'm saying is... Mm -hmm. He knows the that there are checks there firstly. It's coming from us, from Australia. It's about us. We are, we are one of the We're three parties. Yeah, so well, we are one of the it, three parties. It's about what we think yeah. is, is the right way to approach Okay, that's fine. Process. But we I are. I think so, an hour is okay. But to and say that there are no checks and, okay. and. So, well, in other words, hour, there, are, there are a level of security checks which are going on, and James right. knows that. And so. What happens in these moments is, you know, Palestinians, it doesn't matter who it is, but Palestinians, Australians are all going, oh, come on, look. You know, again, you know, I, I don't think that's appropriate. Okay. Holding government accountable, making sure that, you know, we have the protections in place is absolutely critical. Sure. But when we the, talk the, about it, let's just talk about it. Asked. In, yeah. Of course, uh, that's what I'm saying. Does, yeah, no, I, I, I take your point, I take your point. I want to ask you guys, because the Prime Minister admits that Coles and Woolworths, the duopoly there is wrong, yeah. but he says he won't forcibly break up supermarket <laughs> chains. He said, quote, we are not the Soviet Union. Yeah, Tanya, should the government intervene on this? I mean, the US and the UK, they've got divestiture powers to do just that. Or is the PM right? Should he well, stay out of this? Uh, look, I have to put my economics hat on this, so I'm not a big <laughs> fan of divestiture powers in yep. this case. I've got to say it's a little bit more complex. It is what very Little complex. Brown is, uh, what Little Proud is uh, uh, suggesting is far more complex than people realise. Yeah. And the idea that you've got to... You, you can't just give that type of legislation to the ACCC. You would, you would require... Uh, the ACCC to make application to the federal court. You'll end up in lengthy, protracted um, court cases because you essentially have to prove that there's an abuse of market power. It's mm. much more complex than people realise. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think the coalition is necessarily proposing um, the right path forward because people need an immediate solution. Correct. Okay? This okay? is they a need problem. An immediate solution, not one that's 18 months down yes. the track after a court case. 
The other problem is uh, Albanese is suggesting the idea that you open up to international um, uh, supermarkets, mm. and I think that's a problem in itself. It's a problem for farmers, it's a problem for Australian consumers, uh, and that's not the answer either. Yeah. So uh, they should be looking at the high energy costs that are associated around at every level of production in Australia. There are other things that they should be looking at, and there's ways of actually ensuring that the penalties are a real deterrent to these supermarkets when they're price gouging. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the solutions by either major party currently being proposed no. are the right answer. No, but I mean, the thing is, there are two inquiries going on mm. right now. Yeah. Uh, but as you mentioned, we're not expecting to get the findings, Craig, of mm. these inquiries until mm. 2025. Mm. Well, we can't wait that long for prices to go down. Do you think there needs to be a level of government intervention? Oh, possibly. I think, firstly, it's good that we're asking the question, and this mm. hasn't happened for a long time, so I think you've got broad support, certainly community mm. support, and it looks like broad political support for, you know, some solutions, because everyone who's in, you know, in the political class, if you like, is saying, look, my constituents are feeling the pain here, yeah. right, so I need to do something. <laughs> Uh, I, I um, a volunteer a really wonderful place called Addison Road Community Centre here in Sydney, and what I can tell you is that uh, the need for just basic provisions to get through tonight and for their children has increased by several hundred percent over the last year wow. and is still increasing. So hundreds of people in line every day just to get a box of food. Mm. Um, so, you know, from my perspective, we need to do something. Um, I do think that there is an argument for a basic set of provisions that, you know, all Australians need to be able to get through the next week, yes. um, that we have some controls around those just to give, provide people with an opportunity to, you know, feed their families, which at the moment, sadly, is not always no. happening. No, look, cost of living is still front of mind mm, for many, absolutely. so it's not going anywhere. Now, we've heard this week that working from home could become a legal right for millions of Aussie workers under a major review from the nation's employment watchdog. Tanya, in your view, is this overreach? What about the impact that this could have on employers if they're then forced to make this a legal right? Mm. Look, right now, people need to understand there isn't a legal right. Mm. Uh, you have a right to ask your employer, yes. OK, for a flexible working arrangement. Of course, you have that right. And together, you can negotiate with your employer what, what best suits uh, both you and, indeed, your employer. Uh, it's just not feasible for most industries out there, OK? You can't imagine people working in the construction industry uh, working from home, right? Yeah, it's correct. not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but the, ultimately what's happened here is... Federal Labor has a problem. Um, um, they don't want to... They should be telling their public service, and indeed all of the states out there should be telling their public service to come back to work, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. That's what this is about. They're yeah. hiding from the real issue, and that is they don't have the authority or, or the will to actually tell their workers to come back to work. Yeah. Back well, they're to the scared. Office. They're worried they're scared. about backlash. They're worried about this the unions. That's right. They're Correct. worried about strikes. They're worried about backlash. Yeah. Um, but they're not worried about the small business operator. No. Okay? They're not worried about the mums and dads businesses that are doing it tough, that really need people there at the shop front, for example, absolutely. or on the factory and floor. Um, it, it is not... Um, uh, it is really bad, I think, for Australia's economy yeah. to go down the path of actually making this a legal right. It doesn't... It's, it's already... There's so many people already working from home. Oh, well, yeah, this so is people I mean, can do it. We work from home during the pandemic. Right. This, is, this is the argument, Craig. We work, we work from home during the mm. pandemic. But are we at a stage where we really think it's acceptable for 20-something, 20, 30-something-year-olds 20 to be sitting at home in their pyjamas, mm. taking Zoom <laughs> calls, taking Microsoft team calls with their boss. I mean, is that really appropriate? Um, I empathise with both sides here. So, mm. you know, I see, of course, the issue, you know, we need strong businesses and strong small, small businesses and, and so on. And uh, But at the same time, you know, workers, I think, um, and employees throughout COVID got a sense of that perhaps there's a different conversation around balance of life mm. and, you know, the amount of time they invest, which, and you've seen that in other political conversations in the last week. Um, I must say uh, that this is only one of the conversations that we're going to have to have going forward. I Absolutely. think there are certain industries where people can do it and others not. And um, but I'm more, I would be more concerned about, you know, Australia preparing for the kind of AI and robotics revolution, you know, that's coming in the next 10, 15 years. For and having, scary revolution. Yeah. yeah well, and projecting out more so that we're not people's constantly... people's lounge rooms, hey? Yeah, from yeah. your lounge room, perhaps, <laughs> while you're from on the, the computer, computer sitting, wow. sitting um, in your pyjamas, yeah. watching it all Forget unfold. Forget about towns and cities that need people oh. out there working and, and buying. Food yeah, and, and, I just uh, wonder if it's just yeah. overreach. Look, it's, it, it's an interesting conversation. We're going to have more on that later in the program. Tanya Mihalik, Craig Foster, lovely right, to see you both as always. Well Thank you so much. Have a great weekend.